to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, yeah. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. The wireless woman. You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, I fives, welcome back. To yet another underground and still, yes, I know, under renovation <laughs> transmission of the wireless woman. Go ahead and do me that big favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel. And click the bell for notifications of when I go live and when I upload new content because it has become sporadic. I am so sorry, y'all. I just got done with midterms, but we're here. We're back. And that's all that matters. You're all that matters to me. Yeah, yeah. That's really all that matters. So today I'm here to talk about a concept that has come across my desk that is new to me, but there's been all this talk about pick me, pick me this, pick me that, pick me this. And then I heard it. The term I had been waiting for, which was baby, skip me, skip me. In a world of pick me's, my endeavor, I desire to be a skip me. You have a calling, you're a hero, Hancock. You're going to be miserable the rest of your life until you accept that. So the world has become increasingly polarized. You know, it's like either it's Israel or Palestine, Republicans or Democrats. There's just no room, no space between. The space between. Just the black and the white. And we are being increasingly pushed towards fascism. You know, I, I love to use that word over here because I still can. And the predecessor to the fall of civil liberties is the process that we're seeing right now, propaganda, polarizing activity. You know, it's been there, you know, in sports teams and nationalism and patriotism. But now we're seeing it come down to a more microcosmic level. We see, you know, families that split over QAnon, families that split over their support of Donald Trump, and, you know, on a cellular level, really. There are some people, especially if you're still cognizant in this system, but you kind of wake up at odds with yourself sometimes. You know, am I really willing to go to war to hold on to this belief? And so we're seeing that because think of it. If you're in a system where you have, let's say, five options, if the first two don't really appeal to you, then you can start looking at the next three. Like even we as black women are constantly being put in the situation of feeling like we don't have options in an attempt to make us choose things that don't necessarily benefit us, like we're in a two-party uh, political system. And listen, the Republicans ain't going to take care of what you need, and the Democrats ain't going to take care of what you need. There's this huge chasm in between the two. They become diametrically opposed against each other. The war is still coming, Charles, and I intend to fight it by any means necessary. And in their attempts to have no overlapping agenda in their attempts to be so far from the solutions of the other, they don't leave any gray area. A lot of people's best interest gets factored and fenced out when the two parties are that polarized against each other. So when that happens and we're forced a lot of times to go against our own best interest just to side against someone, a lot of times the things that we're for get negated in that process. And that moves us into a space of cognitive dissonance that if we continuously live in that, you know, having to choose the lesser of two evils when neither is actually good, we will find ourselves not seeking the good thing. You know, we're so busy picking out to try to find what we can salvage. And so this is what is happening in this phenomenon. And what's been interesting is whether you're a pick me or a modern woman or a Jezebel or whatever the label is that's been slapped on you by the person who's giving themselves options while taking yours away. Mm -hmm. You have to, though, pick a side. 
And I have decided myself personally, but baby, I'm a dodge the draft. I don't need to be a pick me, modern woman, traditional woman, Jezebel. I'm going to be a skip me. Be centering men has to be the central focus at this point as women. We have just gotten done watching a whole group of basically majority men on Capitol Hill not even be able to decide amongst themselves who's going to lead them, <laughs> not even be able to win a majority vote with their own colleagues and peers with the fate of the country on the line, with the world watching this and saying that our democracy is unstable. But just to save their own ego, they were willing to fight this out in front of the American public, in front of the world, and no bipartisanship that has completely disappeared in this process of being polarized against each other. There are people who have messages on one side that are not even willing to factor in the arguments and complaints of the other side as they're seeking out solutions for the, the majority of people to be able to fall in line with. And the thing about having this two-party situation is that all it takes to slip into authoritarianism, all it takes to fall into totalitarianism, dictatorship, is for one of those parties to fall. By the process of elimination, if you can just tip the scale to 51, 52, 53 percent, that's enough to topple democracy. Having fewer options makes it frail. It dilutes the strength of the system. And this is what we as black women have to understand. We're increasingly in a situation where we are being made to believe that we have dwindling options if we're dark, if we're aging, if we're overweight, if we're, we got to take what we can get. You know, I am an independent. And as an independent, it's been tough watching the fact that I don't have a whole lot of options available to me. I have to in order to ensure that even some of my interests get addressed, pick aside. And so the most revolutionary thing that Black women could be doing right now is to choose yourself. Is for us to make a side that does not give in to the competing interests of everyone else. Black women don't need to take the side of white feminists. That didn't serve us. But we also don't need to take the side of black men and black liberation movements that didn't liberate anybody but one faction of our community. Because see, once they got white women and, and millionaire industries, see, black women have billionaire industries with these weave wigs and lashes that they don't want us to wear. They don't want us to wear it because it has created Upward mobility for a lot of black women who are making body butters and selling lashes and bundles. But they had millionaire industries before we ever even had the opportunity with the NBA, with the NFL, with rap, with crack. And they used it to go buy mansions on hills in gated communities and marry white women. And be able to sit up on TV and say that they're the first black man to do this. And that instead of their accomplishment meaning something for their community, the pride that they have for standing in that moment is their biracial family. I'm very proud to be African-American. But I'm also very proud that my wife is white. I mean, got on TV and said this. So what is your pride, Black women? What is the thing that you have that you can hold on to? What's the distinction that all of these years of oppression and repression have led you to? And it's not to get to the precipice of liberation and fold. We watched that with Black Power Initiatives, that just when they were poised 
to have industry, to have infrastructure, to have true revolution and liberation, they decided to integrate. They use tricks, and one of the tricks that they've invented is, is this token integration to give the to get Negro, so-called Negro leaders to accept a few token crumbs of integration that don't solve any problem for the masses of black people in this country whatsoever. There must be a revolution of values in our country. As Jimmy Baldwin said on one occasion, what advantage is there in being integrated into a burning house? Ladies, we cannot integrate the system and still dismantle it. It's unfortunate that it comes down to us making that type of choice. And we see people who call not necessarily to action, but to consideration the fact that this may be a sacrifice, a choice that you would have to make, be deplatformed. Like they are willing to completely dismantle the voices of resistance. But yeah, we are here trying to find caveats and excuses to preserve and prolong the influence of oppressors. We don't negotiate with terrorists. It's time to decenter me and not say pick me, but skip me. So if you see what I see and you feel as I feel. But if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel, and if you would seek as I seek. Go ahead and drop that fire. Headphones emoji in the comments. I look forward to engaging with you there. Until the next Wi-Fi transmission. Y'all already know the drill. Go ahead and crunk out for me. Now this is your place, but I am in charge of the girls. And you can just kiss my ass.